Now, if you go to Google or Bing and do a search on cloud services pricing, there is an article that Microsoft puts out on how they handle the pricing of a lot of their different services that will help you get a better understanding of this. So I'm going to go to this little article right here, and uh, I want to look at a couple things. All right. So the first thing to understand when it comes to cloud pricing, pricing is the region of the world where this service is going to be managed in a Microsoft data center will affect the price. So in this case, I'm looking at central U.S., but you could drop this down and select the region that, uh, that it's looking at. The next thing would be the currency. So you can select the currency. And then you can also look whether or not you're looking at this from an hourly perspective or a monthly perspective. Okay. A lot of things you do in Azure is going to be uh, analyzed either hourly or monthly, but a lot of people when they're working from a, from a financial standpoint, they're usually working off of like a monthly budget. So a lot of people like to go with monthly, okay, when they look at this. But from here, we're looking at some of the, the services being hosted in the cloud involving virtual machines and all that. And you can see they have what's known as an instance. Uh, this is a an instance of a virtual machine for example that's being hosted and they're telling you how many cores how much memory and then they got what's called temporary storage uh, that's going to be hosted there for you temporary storage is going to involve uh, what is known as virtual memory that's stored on a uh, temporary hard drive for that machine okay not going to get into the the extreme depth on this because really really just looking at cost here um, but as you can see pay as you go this is 1460 a month for this 5840 a month and as you go up, you're seeing getting more cores, get more RAM, more temporary storage. Here's even more cores. So you can see this is the average. So if you were to keep this, if this was a virtual machine, and you were to keep it up and running 24-7, it never shuts down, then, then this is what you're going to average a month. Okay. Now keep in mind, you can schedule virtual machines to shut down at certain times and come back up at certain times if you want. Uh, maybe you could even have virtual machines shut down during the weekend. There's ways of, of kind of limiting the, the cost here. So if we go down, here's some other uh, uh, instances that you can go with. All right, but really what I want to show you is we move down here to uh, some of these other examples where you start getting into like solid state drives and, uh, and all of that with your virtual machines. You can do pay as you go. But you also have an option where if you already have got a feel for what type of virtual machines you're going to need to do your job, you can do, you can pay a reserve fee, okay? This is also sometimes referred to as an enterprise agreement with Microsoft. So, for example, let's say that this year uh, we did this uh, D1 instance. Then again, I always recommend that you start out as just pay as you go because you don't really know what you need. But then, as a year goes by, or a few months goes by, you determine, okay, this is this is exactly what I need. Okay, this this hundred and two dollars a month is going to work for us. So what I could do in the, maybe the following year, the months go by after maybe doing this for a few months, I could say, let's go ahead and reserve this for a whole year and look at the savings. Or if I do three years, look at the savings. So it ends up you uh, you pay. A, a cheaper rate if you reserve it for a year or three years. So this would be what's called an enterprise agreement with Microsoft as opposed to just pay as you go. Okay. So when you think about and comparing the different pricing, these are some of the things you think about. You have to look at the region, think about the currency obviously, and then whether or not you're looking at this from an hour or monthly standpoint, and then you will um, you will look at the instance. Now, something else that uh, I, you'll you'll probably hear me referring to is that Microsoft has what's called the pricing calculator, and this is the probably the biggest thing that is good for you to to spend time in before you're utilizing things in Azure. I can just do a quick Google search on Azure Price Calculator. Okay, just put that into into Google or Bing or something like that, and the Azure Pricing Calculator is right here. Pricing Calculator. You can go on here and you can very easily choose the things that you're, you're interested in, whether it's virtual machines or storage accounts, and you can look at the pricing based on that. Okay, So again, if I want to look at virtual machines, I can click on that specifically, and then from there I can click View, and I can choose all this stuff here, these different instances, Okay, 
and uh, and go from there. There's the one year plan, three year plan, all of that. You can see the discounts involved. So that is going to be the best way when you're really starting to plan out what Azure services you want and kind of getting a good comparison of the actual cost of those services. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again.